of all the birds that they found. And they would like to us to approve two dates in 2021 for them to come back and uh, visit the fort again, do another uh, bird count, and they need to know this by August 1st so they can schedule into next year, which is why we have it on today's agenda. Um, they were forced to cancel the program because of COVID. It doesn't have anything to do with them coming onto the fort and um, simply doing our bird count. In fact, the Audubon Society used to have a December bird count every year, and I participated in that for about three years where volunteers would come, would all breakfast together, and then we count all the birds, that we, uh, mostly all along the creek, because that's where the great proportion of them are. Um, so they would like to um, uh, visit our property on Friday, April 30th, 2021, and Sunday, May 2nd, 2021. And the tours will start in the morning and conclude after lunch. And the goal is to teach people uh, uh, about boots on the ground, realities, and land stewardship, and uh, lease hunts, property recreation. They can make rec uh, recommendations to us of how to um, use our beautiful uh, uh, birding property out here. And um, by the way, we are on the bird map. Uh, this, this property is designated a birding sanctuary. Yes. No, yes. No, I don't think. So no, in, in our documents. Oh, yes. In our documents. Yes. yes. Um, so anyway, we know that April 2021 is a long way away, but they need to know that we, that they're allowed to schedule it for those two days, and then more information will come the closer we get to those dates. So if you've had a chance to review this, can I have a motion? Oh, wait, or we have, just yeah, a question, the, discussion, oh, excuse me. On the motorized way. transportation and everything, um, will our employees be driving these vehicles or who's going to be doing these tours? Those are options. You yeah, can yes. either do the $10, just let people in to go, yes. give them a map with the tours, or as the landowner, you can hook up a trailer to a truck or a golf cart and drive people. Wait, when you the say trails. landowner, what are you talking about? Well, the association. Asia. But right. if it's this is sent to landowners too, so if you own a 3,000 acre ranch or a 200 acre ranch, you can join birding on the border too. Oh. And you can provide a motorized tour of your property for $40 a guest instead of the ten dollar just open access you've got to walk the trail yourself yes and these th these are all optional okay. right now all we are authorizing the dates for them to right. come over and do the bir their bird count and their their uh, research and then we will have more information as we get closer to those dates all they are doing is we are um, reserving those dates right and this is an educational tour and it's coordinated through the texas a&m AgriLife Extension Service, the Valverde Extension Agent, is putting this on. Yes, yes. The only yeah. question I would have it's lots of fun. is um, that is not during hunting season. It is not. No, April and May. No. Right. Well, that's what I'm getting at. So that, but even if they're to make sure that those days are reserved. Right. It's not hunting days, even if right. hunting was allowed. That's right. Right. Okay. That's well, correct. You got one of the hunting okay. masters right yes, here. That's correct. Okay, so can we have I, a motion? I would move that we accept the birding on the border dates to allow individuals to come and bird here. A second. In 2021. Was that a second? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Um, any comments from the audience? Okay. Um, all in favor? Okay, unanimous, and uh, we'll locate, I'll make myself a note, and I'll send an email to her today that those dates are okay. All right, we're getting there. Okay, um, we got two more action items. Actually, uh, I should have mentioned it, but um, Dustin asked that we add a, a um, action item number eight and um, put back on from last month and it didn't make the agenda and that's our fault we didn't catch it no it did we tabled it yeah no it made it but we tabled it but now no. that'll be For last this month agenda. this month this month oh okay uh the other uh, number seven action item and we'll have the one more after that uh is a uh, 
personally, I have received several requests from members, various members, some I know, some I don't know. And I think some of the other board members have also had requests that we return board meetings back to Saturdays, the third Saturday in the month. Um, it's, uh, it is a board business meeting. We have to have days where our members, our board members, our directors can actually make it to the meetings. Uh, we do have three directors that still work full time and uh, working on a Wednesdays may or may not be on their schedule to get away. But also our members who do work have complained that they can no longer attend board meetings and at work they can't simply sit and watch the meeting at their employment. So uh, we just agreed to bring it up um, for, uh, to, to, excuse me, sorry about that, bring it up for discussion and take action one way or another on it. So before we open it up for a vote, I would like to at least ask the directors their thoughts on the matter. And we'll just go around the table. Uh, personally, for me to come in during the school year, I have to use the state personal day every time I come down on Wednesday. Knew that whenever I put my name in, so that's my issue. But since being seated on the board in February, I have had numerous, numerous people say, why can't the meetings be on Saturday? I've had one member that has said, your meeting is the same time as my board meeting with MUD. So I have to make a choice, go sit on the board at MUD or not go to the meeting. So that's kind of uh, an issue too. Personally, I would like to see them on Saturday, um, but that's my personal personal opinion. Yeah. yeah. I do not want to change it. I mean, we can change it during the week. Um, my personal, um, whether I was an employee or interim director or now a board member, um, I think, like I said, the purpose of the community council is um, it's, it's the, the, that's where the membership needs to go, and that's already the second Saturday. I just don't want, when pe what people don't realize as the employee or anything, this is kind of stressful, and it, I have a s sucky Tuesday preparing for this and a Wednesday. I have kids at home. I value my weekends and we're still having to hire someone so if all of a sudden we make this decision and I'm not saying that we can't change it's all right it's, 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 it, this meeting should be really boring the fun one should be community council but y'all the members issues should make it on our agenda somehow and I think that we kind of talked about that earlier but when I look at other HOAs I mean they're, they're randomly during the week I mean when you look at bank board meetings it's during regular hours because we are gonna we do have to have staff and like I said, we are hiring someone. Personally, I think we should wait. I mean, that person may love doing it on Saturdays. We don't have that person yet, but we may put ourselves in a box in the hiring person because it is exhausting. It's it's like after this, I will have to take a nap. And um, I don't want to do. I don't want to waste my Friday Saturdays. I, I like to spend that with my family. So um, it's it's our meeting, and I think that um, um, I like it during the business. And, I, and as an employee, it was. I would rather not have to like pick up comp time or because this meeting comes very quickly and especially on a Saturday, my personal opinion. Dustin? Yes. Uh, my feelings are very much similar to Brianna's feelings on the matter. Uh, I work, I value my weekends with my family and my children. We volunteer to do this and if we had a GM and we get this thing running like it should, these are business meetings, these monthly meetings. They should be the most boring thing you've ever sat through. There's a lot of confusion out there because we're required by state law to allow members to attend these meetings. That doesn't make them membership meetings. We're not required to allow member input. We do. We appreciate that members come to these meetings and we value your input and we do take it into consideration every single item on the agenda. But it is a business meeting, and if I have to choose between working on a weekend or going somewhere with my family, I'm liable to eventually miss enough meetings to get kicked off the board, honestly. I mean, this thing should take us about probably anywhere between four and eight hours a week of our personal time to keep up with the Fort business. Right now, 
that's not the case. I guarantee you we probably spend 40 hours a week doing this, 30 hours a week. It's, it's a lot of time and the weekends are valuable and I would respectfully remind everyone that this is a business meeting to conduct the business of the fort. It is not a member meeting. I love that y'all show up every month, but I would just soon keep it during the week. Well, the only thing I would say right now is that to pretty much it's a mute question because with this COVID virus thing, social distancing, et cetera, et cetera, you know, you don't want to be have on a Saturday and be at one have 55 people who want to come to this meeting. You can't do it anyway. Right. So I the point is, I think right now, we'll just leave it as it is and, you know, two months from now, whatever, annual at the annual meeting whatever or the next board that comes yeah. in yeah you know just just you know consider it at that time yeah i would also like to make one more note i don't know that the fire marshal has ever been through and declared occupancy on any of the public spaces in this fort when it's not covid i can almost guarantee you that this room is over occupancy during a regular wednesday board meeting we can only fit so many human beings inside this room at a given time and it gets pretty full the only thing you can do then on that is to get the fire marshal over here and give us a capacity yeah i mean i'm, I'm not that, you know, saying I mean, anything like that I, i'm just no, I know, but pointing out that they're they already get pretty full i know yeah. my turn i'm retired um this is not my first trip around the board and it used to be Saturdays. It really doesn't matter to me which day. Um, my children and grandchildren are 1,500 miles away. So, um, But Dustin is right. This is a board business meeting. State law requires that it be an open meeting, which is fine. But the meeting is basically for the board to discuss business. Members, although community council is the membership forum should be um, they don't discuss board business there and sometimes this is the only way our members are able to hear the business that's actually being conducted on the fort yes. um, so that is why a lot of members have requested this and some of it's just habit it was habit for decades to meet on Saturday personally it doesn't matter to me Saturdays are easier for me because I'm the family typist for the board <laughs> And uh, I come into the office for one reason only. It has a standard keyboard and a great big monitor that I have this tiny little keyboard at home. It's convenience. It doesn't matter. Um, the only reason we brought this to the agenda is because of the number of members that have asked us about this. Hey, Sandy, go into that part. We, we have allowed, like, because we send the agenda out prior. So if somebody would send us an email, we'll make sure that maybe we can count that as part of, especially if they take the time to type it. Yes. We can we can put it in during our, because we are allowing members discussion. Right. So I, I, we don't not want to hear from them, it's just that. I, right. well, Additionally, we, these, these meetings are live streamed on Facebook, I believe, and yes. provided via YouTube videos. So and you can watch the information is out there. Yeah. I mean, the members can watch the business being conducted. Right. So I just want to make it clear that we um, that that um, it is a business meeting. It says so in 209 that it's the, for the board to determine and that members are guests, and they encourage allowing members to speak on agenda items, which we do. Yes. Um, so uh, I we marked it as an action item, and I'm going to ask the board to vote. But first, I wanted to know if I have any comments from uh, three on three. We will take three comments, maximum three minutes, and you must come up to the mic. Come on up, Mel. Uh, yeah, it was my unit 27. Uh, I think you all hit, you both hit the nail on the head. You all are volunteers. Thus, you choose to be here. The members, I have heard from numerous members, they would prefer to have it on Saturday so they can be here and express themselves. And they won't work. Thus, it's something that you all should seriously consider because the members are already reaching out to you via email, personal conversations, text, or whatever else. 
Now it's only one weekend, one Saturday a month. I realize we all have families, we have other obligations, but um, during the week, sometimes you're not here because you're working, and that comes first, along with family, they're equal. So I urge you to consider doing Saturdays again, starting at 9.30. Mr. Uh, Herman made a good point about uh, the COVID situation. It may last two months, it may last forever. Okay, we're going to have to coexist with it, meaning that it's just an ongoing, it's going to be an ongoing thing. We need more space. We can go to the NCO club. We can't have it make excuses about not being able to do it on one Saturday a month. Again, everyone here is volunteering. You choose to be here. No one is here by force. Thus, really consider that, please. Thank you. I made a printout of um, our governing and number one. It says the purpose of the, of the association are to carry out the operations of the corporation. Again, it's our job for to maintain the operations. Now, the community council, I'm going to go back and say this, their, their purpose is, is the members an opportunity to express their views of Fort Clark Springs issues. Again, they have to, the second Saturday of the month, it's in their bylaws and stuff. So we, you know, practice makes permanent, like my seventh grade band director said, it doesn't make perfect. We, we, this is just what we've always done, but the, the most ideal thing to do is to, to work together with community council, and community council should be the voice of the membership, and we should work together on that one. But having two weekends, it would be two weekends in a row. The, the, second, the second weekend would be community council, and the third one would, would be that. It, I, I think... Well, I was at community council this weekend. Nobody, nobody here from the board was, well, Mr. Herman was there. And that's why, were you here this morning, we were talking this morning, that we want a copy of the agenda from Community Council, yes, and then we want the actual approved minutes in our board packet. So that way we are constantly on the same page. You know, the, the oh, wait, thing about... I was going to just finish up. I oh, I'm first. sorry. Go ahead. I, I just have a correction. I'm pretty sure Community Council changed from monthly meetings to four times a year. Correct. Uh, so it's, it, it's just the summer months, July and August, that we, they don't have meetings. Right. Oh, they changed again. <laughs> well, community council announces all their meetings on dispatch, so everybody can keep up with it. Is there anybody else with a comment, Lisa? Um, I would just say, you know, I agree that that it is the board's decision. It is your meeting. Has there ever been a discussion, maybe as a compromise, to doing a, a, a four o'clock meeting? Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's you know your your the time uh, four or five. <laughs> well, I don't know. My it helps speed things up. <laughs> you want to go home? I don't know. But just the thought. Okay. All right, is that two? That's three. That's three. Okay. I um, move that we move the business meetings to Saturdays. Immediately. What? Starting with the next business meeting, the board meetings. So well, you know, I think. I think we need to just forget it for now until we have a general manager. I agree. Because once the general manager's here, a lot of the stuff that we have to do, we won't be doing. We we need to though remember so, we need to remember though that this meeting, as Rayanna said, is our meeting. Whoever we hire for a GM works for the board and we work for the membership. If the board decides that the meeting is on a Saturday because it works best for us and the membership, then that GM must be willing to work on a Saturday or they're not the right person. But we just have four members us. say we don't like it on Saturday. We only have one person saying like Saturdays. I've had tons of people that have talked no, to me. Right. Our, this is, this is not a right. member okay, well, meeting. Let me interrupt. That's the point. It's not a member meeting. It's a board it's meeting. Right. It only involves right. the general manager, the executive secretary, and five people here. That's all this meeting and is about. Let me remind people that the general manager, actually, bylaws refer to this person as executive officer. That was never changed. It's just a title. The job is the same. But that person, including our human resources person, they are salaried. It's not that we're discussing overtime and all that kind of thing. These are salaried professional employees well some but weekends like D dustin and i said we might step off the board because we do put our family first right so we may not get good applicants when they think that they're going to end up having to work okay we okay that's Friday. what the vote is for we have 
We have a motion on the floor. We'll take this one first. Okay. Robert has moved that we move the meetings to Saturday as of the July um, uh, regular board business meeting. Is there a second? The motion fails. There's no second. Okay. Do we have any other motions today with this? I make a motion we table this for another month or two until we see where we stand with Culvert, the general manager, and then we could look at it again. Do we have a second to that? Okay, motion fails. Um, the the, um, state, the board meetings will remain on the third Wednesday of the month at this time, and if necessary, we'll bring it up in the future. Okay, the last item, and I'm sorry it's not on that, it's an action item requested by Dustin uh, to um, approve or not approve the um, capture tranquilizer drug for um, hunting purposes and he they just had their meeting just before the board meeting so we weren't able to get this on the agenda and and um, so I'm going to turn this over to Dustin to explain what happened and what they decided. So. And before, but before you go into detail what it is, I did ask accounting to give us um, an expense, what's come in from the trapping and what expenses have come out. So there wasn't any expense, but if we want to just kind of pass this around, we can see how much revenue. Let him read it off. Okay, so uh, a little bit of background for those who may not have been at the last meeting where I addressed the hunting and trapping programs. Uh, the fort has a serious, serious overpopulation of deer. When my family and I moved on to the fort in 2006, uh, there were probably somewhere in the neighborhood of around 40 axis deer on the entire fort. They had just come on, I believe in 2001, after a flood broke a neighbor's fence, uh, and the whitetail were everywhere. Now it is almost exactly the opposite. We see whitetail here and there and the axis just run them up like crazy. They're beautiful. I love them. Most people here love them. They're gorgeous creatures. They're delicious. They also are severely overpopulated to the point where, God forbid, if we ever got a disease going in here, whether it be anthrax or blue tongue or any of the other ungulate diseases, members would be very unhappy. Uh, we're looking at dead deer laying up all in people's yards, all along the creek. Then the state would have to come in. They'd have to trap all of the pet cats and unleashed animals running around and destroy them and all of those carcasses will have to be burned it it's a serious problem with potential for disastrous consequences on this property so many on the ford enjoy hunting there's many outside that come pay us to hunt our deer we make quite a bit of money doing that it is for several years saved us from assessment increases um, but we don't take enough animals off to hurt the population from hunting. So we, now we have a trapping program where they bring large panel traps in, feed in there, let the axis deer go in there, they watch them on video, close the gate, load them on a trailer and take them off and sell them. They purchase the animals from us. Every time they take an animal off, the fort gets a check for that animal. They go and resell them to some rancher that wants to farm them or shoot them or whatever. Um, in order to do that, some of the larger axis bucks, especially during the rut when they're hard horned, they get in that trap, they will get after the other deer in there because they're animals and that's what they do. So um, it is a best practice to use tranquilizer guns to put these hard horned bucks to sleep so that you can load all the does and the smaller bucks into the front of the trailer and then drag this sleeping deer into the back of the trailer to haul them off so that he's not killing all your other money makers. The drug used to do that is a controlled drug. It's a prescription drug. It has to be prescribed by a veterinarian and has to be prescribed to the landowner who owns the deer, the association. So 
my proposal is that we uh, contract our local veterinarian, Zach Davis, to come in here. He will look over our deer herd. He will write the Florida prescription for these drugs. The association will purchase them. The association will store them. And the trapper, he has his own gun to load it into, will use it in the presence of the state game warden. You know, and we're going to have to keep a log every time we use this prescription drug to make sure it's not walking out any back doors or anything. But, uh, that limits losses both to the association and to the trapper. So um, that my, my uh, motion is to authorize up to $750. The drugs used come in, it's called Bang packs, bang packs. Each one is approximately $260. So that would put us at 520 for the drugs itself and the rest should handily cover uh, Zach Davis's fee to come out here and look at our deer and write the prescription. Is the trapper going to reimburse us for the... The trapper will reimburse us for the cost of the drug and the cost of the vet visit. Who's going to administer the drug? The trapper. So he's going to have to come here almost on a, what, a daily basis? Well, he has to call us whenever he comes on anyway to get the deer, but yes, he'll, you know, either Matt or Philip will and they call the, game the drug. Right? Call the okay, game well, that, yeah. Go, okay. yeah. So it doesn't put any burden on us to have to no. pay somebody to go do it? No. And thus far, a trapping this trapping season, which started, I believe, in March? April. April. Uh, we, the fort has uh, sold, it looks like, one, two, four, six deer for a total of $6,325. That has not cost the association one penny. Six deer? Right. that much revenue? Mm -hmm. Six grand. What were they? Uh, there was two... Twelve hundred and fifty dollars, two six, two, no, two four-year-old bucks at twenty-five hundred bucks. Two smaller bucks at what is that? Six fifty a piece. Um, I don't know. This isn't broken out right. They're bucks. <laughs> They're bucks. They range in sizes. There's a different fee for as you go up in size. No does. And just discuss it. Well, you know what I mean? Let them know what we came up with. For dash 11s? Yeah. So uh, we had a meeting. Would you like to vote on this? Because this is a separate issue we're going yeah, into later. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, it's not really a separate issue because of my concerns. I think you're going to address them. And I won't vote for the tranquilizer if I'm not going to vote for the, the, the trapping program. So they're kind of tied together. The trapping program already exists. Well, the continuation of it. Uh, that's not on the agenda today, but... Excuse us, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't you just summarize the meeting? And yeah. yeah. Okay, so there were concerns brought up at, uh, I think, last month. Mm -hmm. There were some deer traps. There was a rutting buck in there. He got out of hand, and he killed several does in the pen before they could release them. The buck ended up getting released. Several of the does died. Uh, two of them were found soon enough to be salvageable, you know, to be edible. The others were not found in time, which is... The purpose of having this drug to prevent such things so uh, they tabled this at the last month's meeting that I was not here for uh, and we had a meeting Brianna and I and the game warden and Philip and Matt and the fort biologist or wildlife biologist so some adjustments are made to the trapping program of course Mr. Ducharme who does the trapping he's in business to make money so uh, he buys the deer from us at a reduced rate. He has to turn around and sell them 
to somebody who's going to sell them to somebody else. So he gets a good deal. He's not really all that interested in does. He will take them, but if he's his trailer's up full of two or three bucks already, he doesn't have room for them. So he was turning them back. Well, the problem with that is the whole purpose of the trapping program is to take mouths off of the fort. So our the compromise that we came up with is if he has a trailer full of buck deer and can't haul does, he is going to call myself, the game warden, Matt, somebody. We're going to go out there, help him load his bucks, and we're going to euthanize the does, and we're going to offer them to fort members, owner members. Um, if you have an eleven, a res if, you, uh, if, yes. if you have a structure, if you get garbage pickup, so you have right. to have an, like, at least an eleven account. It's not for an FRM, or um, or if you just have a lot, you actually have to have a structure. Right. So the way be, yes. be charge yeah, so, so the way this will work for owner members with the residents here, you we will put out, or you can get on a list, and we'll call you, and if you would like a doe. You pay the association $50, and $50 covers you through the entire year, from September to September. Well, you will get, for it's for both, oh. yeah. You will get however many does you want, because there's there'll probably be quite a few come up. You know, of course, we don't have the facilities or the capability to butcher them all for you, We'll make sure that you know their the insides are clean and you can do with them what you will if you would like one. But uh, they're the members' deer. We need to get rid of a bunch of them. This is a good way to do it. It also affords the membership access. To yeah, to meat. access to protein, delicious protein. I'm we're working on getting the cooler at Dickman. Yes, so that, that way because it's going to happen pretty quick. And if you want to be on a list. Right. Then so, we can go down the line. Then if you want to let yours hang in there and age for a week or so before you come get it, that's fine too. Okay, now remember folks that trapping brought in six thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Yeah, especially especially when um COVID nineteen has reduced our revenue at the motel, the service club. As soon as it came, everybody canceled all of their reservations. So we need the revenue, and six grand is a lot of money. So we do not, we, uh, the, the uh, trapping agreement is already in place. It's already been signed. We're not voting on that today. We are voting on the expense of the tranquilizer so that we do not have the, um, the mortality rate that we have with uh, bucks out of control uh, during the rut. So um, that's the purpose of it. And let's see, any more for the good board? question? You, you say in the expense of it, but isn't it a recuperable yes. expense yes. from? Yes. So it's not. It's not. It's an initial expense right. to it's us. An initial outlay. But it will be paid for by the trapper. By the trapper, so right. we get our money back. Right. So right. this program basically doesn't cost us anything. Right. It's it's profit. Okay. So, okay, now um, let's. Uh, just quickly, any comments from, there's one. I was curious, um, the, the name of the drug and where are we storing it since it's a controlled substance. I'm a little concerned about somebody. Yeah, well, security will it. have it yeah. locked security. up. We'll do math, math, not just where, security. Right. Where do they, um, where they is it? They have a safe. Here in the building or mm -hmm. where is it? In a safe. Yeah, what are you you safe. picking it? Yeah. yeah, well, I mean. No, you can't have any, Helena. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you where it is. That's the name of the tranquilizer. I'm an RN, so I can't oh, help but want to know. You said it's Bango a, or yeah, something. It's, it's, it's called that's a trademark name. It's a, It's the same. I'd have to Google it. It's the same, the same stuff that Zuzi used to tranquilize. Yes. And we're not going to let anybody know where it's Mental. kept, but it will be kept in a locked okay. right. It's not a human yeah. tranquilizer. It's for, it's animal specific. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have a, so you made a motion already? Well, would you repeat your motion, please, Dustin? Uh, I move to approve the expenditure of up to $750, but not more than 
that for the per the contracting of the local veterinarian to come assess our deer herd and write a prescription for a tranquilizer for the association and for the purchase of two kits. Second. All in favor? Unanimously and uh, Yes, that's uh, <laughs> Okay, and Dustin, you'll take care of that. Yes. All right. Okay, we have concluded our new business. We shouldn't be too long in executive session, but we have a couple of member issues that we need to discuss. So uh, the time is 10 till 1. We're sorry we're so late today. We had just a couple of pickups. long pickups. Yes. All right. We are adjourning to executive session. <laughs>